Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pond Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and tonight I will be your guide as we embark on a sweet, sleepy summer journey through a meadow full of wildflowers and soothing surprises. We'll breathe in the sweet aroma of the flowers, meander along a creek that laces through the peaceful landscape, and gaze up at the clouds as butterflies flit overhead. Before we begin, however, let us take a moment to relax and find peace and comfort in the place where we are at this moment. Close your eyes and allow your body to sink into the comfortable, cozy surface you are sleeping on. Here and now, there is no to-do list. There are no responsibilities. There are no obligations. By simply closing your eyes and joining me on this beautiful journey, you are already giving your body the rest and relaxation that it craves. Anything else that you are seeking will come in time, but know that now you are already resting. For a moment, journey to a grassy hillside with me. You are not entirely sure where it is, Perhaps it is within the rolling hills of Ireland, or the vibrant Chinese countryside. One thing is for certain, it is absolutely breathtaking. The gently swaying grass seems to beckon to you, urging you to lay down in it and simply be. As you do, the grass brushes softly against your skin, as if it is soothing you to sleep. The wind kisses your skin here and there, bringing with it the calming aroma of lavender and daisies from the hills all around you. You breathe in slowly, allowing yourself to really feel the depth of the breath as it fills up your lungs and your stomach. With it, it brings comfort and warmth. The breath is nourishing you, every part of you from your fingers down, down, down to the tips of your toes. You breathe in, feeling that nourishing breath fill your body and breathe out, feeling a sense of peace and calm as the tension in your body floats out with your exhale. As you breathe in and out, in and out, you start to notice something breathtaking above you. There's a blue butterfly floating just above you. Its delicate wings are so iridescent, they look as if there is magic coursing through them, illuminating them so that they are even brighter than the sun. As you breathe in, the beautiful blue butterfly lowers onto your hands, which are folded neatly below your ribcage on your stomach. You can feel the soft brush of its wings, the tiny gusts that seem to dance off of them. As you breathe out, the butterfly rises with your exhale, soaring up, up, up into the fresh, light air. You continue this dance with each other for quite some time soaking in the beauty of the moment. As you breathe in, the butterfly lands on your hands, finding safety and comfort there. As you breathe out, the butterfly
butterfly takes flight. The sun beams through its blue wings like a sun catcher, a mosaic that shimmers like the sea. Now that we have taken the time to relax and find peace and comfort in the place that we are in here and now, let us begin our story. The sure signs of summer embrace you before you've even opened your eyes, in that peaceful, magical place between being awake and being asleep, they come to you as if you are in a dream. They wash over you one by one, taking their time to welcome you to the day of wonder and nature that awaits you. First, you can hear the sounds of animals greeting the day of birds that are flitting from branch to branch across the wide expanse of meadow just outside your door. You aren't sure who they are speaking to, each other or the world, but there is joy in their chirps. Their bird song feels like an ancient language one as old as time that speaks to all living things, animal or human. In the symphony of sound, you can make out a few distinct calls that seem to be the most powerful musical movement of the morning. A northern cardinal singing its strong, unique sound into the morning air. Its call is as bold as the red feathers cascading down its body. In the brief intervals before its chirping, there is another sound you can make out, something quieter, but perhaps even more joyous. It's the call of a black-capped chickadee. During winter, they are a bird that's in the foreground. They're hardy, able to withstand any amount of snow or sleet or wind that the endless forest tests them with. During summer, they seem more at ease. Their call is an undertone in the soundscape of the morning, as if they, too, have picked this lazy morning to relax. There are dozens, if not hundreds of calls mingling with that of the black-capped chickadee and the northern cardinal. And though they live differently, though they may never have even seen each other before, their songs all meld together to create something beautiful. But it's not just the birds that are singing into the morning. As the sun starts to rise, you can hear the cicadas rising with it. Their rhythmic buzz seems to wiggle through the air, infusing everything with the joy of summer. It's a nostalgic sound one that makes you think of summer break, of hopscotch on smooth, chalk-smeared blacktop, of the smell of freshly cut grass. It is a background noise throughout the sunny days of summer, reminding you that you are in good company, wherever in the forest or meadows you may wander. You stretch in your linen sheets. The bed creaks, the way all antique cottage beds do, in a way that oddly makes you feel even more welcome. The iron rung lattice at the foot of your bed is adorned with engravings of flowers. You think for a moment 
about how long that took someone to do years and years ago with nothing but their pure skill and candlelight to guide them. Perhaps they were etching flowers that you can find just outside the door. You've rented this cabin for a week. It's a place of peace, far removed from the cities, far removed even from the suburbs. The house is a simple cottage, a four-room farmhouse where artists and people in search of true relaxation have flocked for years. You're sure a quaint family lived here back in the day, admiring the very same view that you do as you look out the window. The comfort that the world is untouched, the landscape remaining the same as it has for years and years, it brings you a sense of belonging. In a world of ever-changing paths and journeys, this place, this nature, has remained. And with each year, summer comes. No matter how much snow in winter, no matter how much rain and sleet in spring, it always awakens and shrugs off the coat of the other seasons. With it come these days of warmth and calm. You stretch and toss the eggshell white blankets aside. The fabric is crinkled, lined with signs of wear from your night curling up in them. But you like that. It reminds you that you were there, and it almost feels like an invitation beckoning to you to join it again when the time is right, when you are ready. It will always be there waiting for you, welcoming you. As you rise onto the old wooden floorboards, they creak and crack beneath your gentle footsteps. The wood is pine, with big, wide planks that you know must have come from old growth many, many moons ago. Gazing out into the forest, you can see the descendants of the trees at your feet, and it is comforting to see them holding up, even to this day. It's still early, and the sun is still making its arc up into the sky. You know as the day continues on, the landscape will change along with it. You wonder what surprises, what differences await you in the land that you've come to love in such a short amount of time. You step outside the old front door. It creaks, of course, just like the bed, the floorboards, the chair that is nestled beside the old brick fireplace. Perhaps it is just the house welcoming you to the morning. You cast one last glance into the room before you embark on the beautiful day awaiting you. The sheer white curtains billow in the flower-fragranced breeze as it meanders into the house invigorating everything with the refreshing aroma of the outdoors. You close the door behind you, and before you, a world of wonder awaits. The cottage rests in an expansive meadow, one that seems almost too beautiful for words. You wonder why no trees have grown here, why there is such a stark perimeter around the grasses and flowers where the trees rise up into the baby blue sky. But you are grateful for it. It reminds you of the long plains in Iceland with nothing but mountains in the distance or the prairies of the Midwest 
where sweet grass and wheat dance and sing in the unfiltered wind, their golden colors seemingly reflecting the sun overhead. Beside the home, a creek meanders through the meadow. It seems to lace through the land, both a unifier and divider. Birds emerge from the nearby trees and skirt just above the surface, snatching up bugs or a drink for themselves from the cool water. You wander over to the creek, following the dreamy, inviting sound of the trickling current as it continues into the forest to the south of you. You wonder where this creek begins. Is it from the mountains in the far distance? From glaciers, perhaps? From an untouched lake, tucked back beyond the valleys and mountains and meadows? You dip your feet into the water. It is so clear, so clean, that the stones beneath the surface look like a mosaic. There are rocks and pebbles over every color, speckled with a light salmon, a cloudy gray, a vibrant green. They've been here for decades, consistently being smoothed by the rocks as water flows down from whatever faraway place it originates. And you know this creek is part of the reason there's so much life here. Sure, the birds and nearby plants use it, but they aren't the only ones. When you finally pull your gaze away from the sparkling pebbles below you, your eyes land on something even more miraculous. In these early morning hours, a doe and her fawn wander through the meadow. They are utterly calm, embracing a moment grazing on the flourishing sweet grass and flowers all around. There is a gentleness to them that is unlike anything you've ever seen before. They pad through the world as if they don't want to harm the earth below them, as if they're honoring it. There's a softness that radiates from everything they do. The way their ears twitch when the wind picks up, the way their snouts quiver as they assess the flowers below them, seeing if they're fit to eat. The fawn is still speckled with white dots on its tawny coat, and though it looks to its mom for guidance, there is simply too much happiness with it to stay in one place. The little fawn frolics, leaping and jumping and spinning around. It seems to invite its mother to join in on the fun, but she eats instead, leaving her fawn to excitement. The fawn is a surprising mix of grace and clumsiness. It bebops around, somehow both prancing like it's floating on air and tumbling like it's never walked a day in its life. The innocence of the deer in the meadow is enough to make you smile from ear to ear. Then the doe spots you. You aren't sure at first, that is until you feel the shift in energy radiate through the meadow. The doe is still, unmoving. Her big amber eyes lock onto you, observing you to see what your next move is. Not wanting to bother her, you do the only thing you can think to do. You sit. The flowers and grass seem to make way for you, welcoming you into its domain. To your surprise, when you sit, the doe tilts her head. 
I'm not going to hurt you, you assure her, the tone of your voice honey sweet. You know the doe can't understand you, and yet, somehow, it seems to. The doe continues to eat, not casting you another concerned glance. The fawn, on the other hand, is curious. It tilts its head at you and approaches you, growing nearer and nearer to the creek. Standing on the other side, it feels like you're close enough to touch it. You can see the flakes of gold warmth in its coat, the colors that help it blend into the beauty of the forest around you. Its muzzle scrunches as it sniffs the wildflower-filled air, trying to make sense of what exactly you are. But then, the doe heads towards the forest. She glances back at her little fawn, trying to see if they're following behind. Not wanting to get separated from their mother, the fawn follows behind, leaping and prancing its way through the wildflowers with no hesitation. As they do, you start to notice how alive this meadow truly is, even without their presence. The front of the house, just behind you, is bathed in the purple glow of lilac bushes. They're tall and thick, with wide green leaves that seem to glisten in the sun. The lilacs themselves somehow look both delicate and heavy, bending the strong branches as they bob in the wind. And yet, the petals seem to float away in the breeze, raining down on the ground like snow. Here in New England, lilacs bloom in early summer. The smell of them reminds you of a childhood sitting in a reading nook, enjoying a fairy tale as the aroma of the perfect purple buds washed over you. The fragrance of lilacs is unlike anything else. There's a sweetness to them, and yet, at the same time, a wildness. They seem to coax everyone outside, begging them to explore and see what the world beyond their front door has to offer. You extend your hand, cupping the bottom of one of the blooms. The petals are still damp with the dew of the morning, which only makes the breathtaking fragrance more dreamy. There are dozens of kinds of flowers around you, swaths of orange, of pink, of yellow, or blue, and of course, more purple. This time of year, the first few weeks of June, purple flowers are abundant. The lilacs hover high from the bushes that can be trimmed to any shape. They seem to watch over the wildflowers around them. Then, there's the lupine. Just the sight of it makes you want to melt. Not only is it purple, but white and blue as well. They rise from the ground, sturdy and beautiful, clustered so close together, cuddling against one another. They seem to blanket the evergreen scene before you. The patches of lupine are both thick and breathtaking. They sway in unison with the breeze, making the whole meadow feel alive. Then there are the irises. You cannot stop yourself from meandering over to them just to get a closer look. The grass and soil is soft beneath your feet, like a carpet laid out just for you. 
inviting you deeper into the meadow. The strong, tall blades of grass around the irises are a fortress, a sight to behold. They look like an ornamental grass, with thick, matte leaves that reach for the sun. The iris itself is a delicate curl of purple and blue. There's something about the irises that transports you in time. You can almost smell the aroma of fresh cooked bread and can almost hear the farm animals milling about in the distance. It seems as though their beauty has been forgotten by many, and yet, here it stands, shimmering in the sun for no one but itself. Ahead of you, indigo has just begun to bloom. The blooms start from the bottom of the stalk, working their way up to the top, each bud unfolding at its own pace. You admire the bluish purple of the indigo against the bright blue of the sky. And then, there are the other swaths of color between the brushstrokes of blue and purple. The yellow daisies that pop against the green. Just the sight of them makes you smile. Of course, there's the pink of red clovers that blanket the grass in between the flowers. As a child, you remember eating red clover as you sat outside in the summer sun. You'd peel the petals from the top of the flower and place them on your tongue. With each bite, a wave of garlicky, sweet, earthy flavor would dance across your tongue. You reach down now. Grass tickles your palm and the back of your hand as the breeze swirls around you. You want to close your eyes for a second to feel it. And you do just that. With just the sound of the breeze and grass and flowers rustling around you, and the sound of the birds overhead, you feel utterly at peace. You open your eyes and pluck a single red clover from the soil. The flowers come off with ease, and as you put them on your tongue, a feeling of nostalgia welcomes you home. You press the flowers between your front teeth, allowing the flavor to wash over your taste buds once more. You can't help but smile, thinking about all that nature provides for us. Next to the house, you couldn't help but notice a honeysuckle bush. You meander back over to it, admiring the purple, trumpet-like flowers that grow off the climbing vine. You pluck one off the vine. You bite off the end of the flower, a small, yellow little rounded piece, the bottom of the stem. Then, slowly, you suck the nectar from the flower. The honey-like sweetness brings a smile to your face. In the heat of summer, a single refreshing bite of honeysuckle might as well be ice cream. Wanting to savor the world around you more, you walk deeper into the meadow. The sound of the birds is louder here, and the buzz of the bees and dragonflies joins in the chorus. You watch in awe as bumblebees bumble from flower to flower, nestling their fuzzy little bodies in to pick up as much pollen as they can. There's a puppy-like nature to the bees as they bounce around, rolling themselves in the pollen and drifting off into the sky with a lazy little buzz. The dragonflies seem in no particular hurry either. 
They float just above the meadow, touching down on flowers on occasion. They're a rainbow of colors, most of them a metallic green, while others stun the skies with swaths of blue and red. You lay back in the grass. It's so soft, it feels just like laying in the bed inside the cabin. This close to the earth, you can really feel it. The coolness of the soil underneath you, protected by these layers of grass and flowers. The warmth of the sun caresses you over and over, reminding you of the season at hand. The feeling of the golden glow on your skin makes you sleepy which only makes the earth beneath you feel more comfortable. From here, the call of the birds and cicadas fades into the background. You are in the sea of grass and flowers, listening to them as they sway side to side, side to side, side to side. They tickle your feet, your head, your arms, brushing you with their aroma and softness. You feel like you could lay here forever, soaking in the sunshine and breeze. And for quite some time, you do. Any worries or troubles you carried with you to this place melt into the ground around you. Things are far too complicated, and returning to simplicity reminds you that it can always be this way if we so choose. You run your hands over the grass. There's something meditative about the different textures of the soil, the rocks, the leaves, the flowers. But then, you feel something surprising. There are many sides to summer, each just as important as the last. And it is this you must thank for the abundant flowers all around you. A cool raindrop taps against your forehead and runs back along your scalp. The warmth of the sun is gone, replaced by a buzz of energy and humidity that you know means a storm is on its way. You open your eyes to see a sight that only summer can bring. Dark plumes of clouds pepper the sky, moving quickly and swiftly. It won't be long before the storm passes and the world is once more bathed in the golden light of the sun. Thankfully, you know the perfect way to enjoy the rain. You rise to your feet, bidding farewell to the bed you've made for yourself within the meadow. The rain slowly picks up pace, a constant drizzle that only makes the flowers around you more fragrant. There's something deeply magical about a landscape bathed in rain. The birds slow, the insects tuck away into hiding places, and people recede inside. It's a reminder to slow down, to weather every storm, as they will pass in due time. Walking by the lilacs is perhaps the most magical thing of all. They've already begun to grow heavy with the raindrops slinking over and curving like a birch tree weighed down by snow. The bush looks bigger now, and the purple seems even more vibrant against the dark sky. In fact, the whole meadow is aglow against the dark gray clouds circling overhead. It looks like a painting too perfect to actually exist. 
It makes you think of storybooks, of adventures, of lovers, of family. It makes you feel like there is much more out there to be explored. But for now, you cozy up in the window seat at the front of the house. You pop open the window, just enough to fill the house with the sound of the rain cascading down off the roof. The aroma of the little lilacs perfumes the room, tying the inside of the home to the outside. You sit there for quite some time, watching as the rain comes down, down, down from the sky. You sip a hot chamomile tea, surely made with flowers that grew right outside in the meadow. Each sip reminds you of the warm sun you were bathing in just moments ago. You curl up with a book in one hand and your tea in the other. The book is almost as engrossing as the scene beyond the window. But perhaps that is because of the scene beyond the window. The whole experience is tied together, made better by one another. You read and sip your tea with the sound of rain and the aroma of lilacs mingling around you. Every muscle in your body is relaxed, and your mind is comfortably silent. As the clouds slowly make their way across the meadow, the rain strengthens and lessens, strengthens and lessens, until finally it stops altogether. The sun peeks out from behind the clouds, and as it does, the landscape once more changes. It is illuminated in a new light, each raindrop serving as a magnifier for the sun. The meadow is aglow in the golden light of the summer sun, and it is, indeed, a beautiful sight. I hope you have enjoyed this sleep story and it has brought you a night of peaceful, restful sleep. Please join us tomorrow night for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams. <laughs>